I have often seen that whenever there is a debate with a logical person on a topic like Ramayana, Mahabharata, Gita, Puranas, he stops at Rigveda in the end after being defeated in all ways and says that Rigveda does not describe any god or deity, there is no hypocrisy with it, that's why you should read Rigveda, so finally I read Rigveda, now let me see what is there in your Rigveda. A little investigation has to be done. When I read, I found something that looks like a hoax, and if not, then why is it because in Rigveda, the most original text of Brahmans, Hindus, Krishna has been addressed with words like Asura, Rakshasa, Sinner, and later in Gita, Krishna has been described as the deity of the people along with all the gods and goddesses. Logically Krishna was such a person who has been accepted as God only under conspiracy to trap the natives. In spite of all this, Krishna, an ordinary man, became the supreme deity. You can see chapter 10 and 14 in Bhagavad Gita to know how great Shri Krishna became. In these chapters Krishna says, O best of the Kurus, I shall now predominate for you the transcendental personalities, for there is no end to my expansion. O Arjuna, I am the soul of all beings situated in the heart of all beings and the beginning of all beings, I am also the middle and the end, thus it is clear that there is no God greater than Krishna as far as the Gita is concerned, even Brahma, the so-called creator of the universe, is inferior to him, let's underscore investigate a little, Indra is the main deity of the Rigveda, the main scripture of the Hindus, of its 10,552 verses, 3,500 i, e, exactly one third are related to Indra, the difference of opinion and war between Indra and Krishna is well known, in the famous epic Mahabharata, Vedvyas has described Krishna as the winner and Indra has been shown to be defeated. This war of Indra and Krishna is not a war fought face to face, in this war, the worship of Indra is opposed by Krishna, due to which the enraged Indra is intent on drowning the people of Mathura by raining heavily, Krishna saves his people from the wrath of Indra through Govardhan Parvat, Indra gets tired and accepts defeat, there is no face to face battle anywhere in this entire episode, but other Hindu scriptures, especially the Rigveda, mention gruesome violence during this battle and show Indra as the victor. It has been said in the 8th verse of Rigveda Mandal 1 Sukta 130 that O Indra, Arya protects the host in war, Indra, who protects his devotees in many ways, protects him in all wars and protects him in pleasant battles, for the welfare of his devotees, Indra had committed violence against Yajna haters. Indra stripped off the black skin of an Asura named Krishna and killed him on the banks of the Anshumti river and burnt him to ashes. Indra destroyed all violent humans. It is written in the first verse of Sukta 101 of Mandal 1 of Rigveda that Gamtavijas, the Indra who killed the pregnant wives of Krishna Asura because of the friendship of King Rijishu with food in the form of hubby for the purpose of his praiseworthy Indra he also spoke words of praise. He holds a thunderbolt in his Kamavarni right hand, desirous of protection, we invoke that same Indra along with the Maruts, verses 13, 14, 15 and 17 of Mandala 8 Sukta 96 of the Rigveda should also be seen to understand the indebtedness of the enmity between Indra and Krishna. Verse 13 of Rigveda, an Asura named Krishna who was fast moving and carrying 10,000 armies along with him lived on the banks of Anshumti river. Indra searched that shouting Asura with his intelligence and destroyed the slayer armies for the benefit of mankind. Verse 14, Indra said I have seen Krishna Asura roaming in a cave on the banks of the river Anshumti, situated in the water like the bright sun, O lustful Marutu. I seek thee for battle, you kill him in battle, verse 15. The fast moving demon Krishna used to live. On the banks of the Anshumti river as a shining light, Indra, with the help of Brihaspati, killed Kali and the armies coming to attack, verse 17, O thunderbolt Indra. You have done that work, 
by becoming a unique warrior, you destroyed the power of Krishna with your thunderbolt, you killed Krishna Asura with his face down for the welfare of Kutsa with your weapons and got the cows of the enemies by your power, translation Veda, Vishwa books, Delhi Press, New Delhi, Var underscore Krishna underscore and underscore Yadav underscore Asuras, the people of Krishna dynasty might not have noticed these verses of Rig Veda, had he gone. The argument would have started long ago, on calling Asura. Krishna mentioned in the Vedas as Yaduvan Shiromni Krishna. Some people will express doubt that both may be different persons, but when we do a thorough review of the entire episode, this doubt will be proved to be rootless, because the color of Yadukul Shreshtha is black. They were cowherders and they also had armies near the banks of the Yamuna, the Asura Krishna of the Vedas also had armies, his residence was near Anshumtiai, e. Yamuna river and he was also black in color and had a cow, his Govardhan was a shelter in the cave, Yaduvanshi. Krishna and Asura Krishna both had opposition with Indra, both were against Yajya and worship of Indra in the Vedas. Krishna and Indra fight with arrows on the Yamuna, killing of Krishna's pregnant wives. Killing of the entire army, killing and burning the black bark of Krishna upside down, etc. The incident of taking the cows is a part of the Arya non-Arya war of this country in the same way as the incident of killing Mahishasura, Ravana, Hiranyakashyap, King Bali, Bansura, Shambhuka, Brihadratha by trickery and killing them is glorified to be done the Puranas which misled the natives of this country, were propagated by the Brahmans by calling them history, the result of this misleading. Propaganda is that the Bahujans are being made to worship those who tricked and murdered their forefathers by calling them bad, many proofs of Yaduvanshi Krishna being an Asura hero or non-Aryan of this country are recorded in the history written by Aryans, Aryans have tried to strengthen their Vedic or Brahman religion by writing their Puranas, Smriti etc. In the Padma Purana, the episode of the marriage of Krishna's grandson Aniruddha and Raja Bali's granddaughter Usha is read. The name of the father of Krishna's grandson's wife Usha was Bansura, Bansuras. Ancestors were like this Bansura was the son of Bali, son of Virochan, son of Hiranyakashyap, son of Asura King Diti, Usha fell in love with Anirudh, the son of Pradyumnan, the son of Yadukul Shreshtha Krishna and Rukmini. Anirudh went to Bansura's palace to meet his girlfriend Usha. On being informed by Bansura about meeting Anirudh in his palace, Anirudh was caught, tied and beaten. On knowing this, Anirudh's father Pradyumna and Bansura had a fierce fight when Bansura came to know that his daughter Usha and Anirudh were in love. He stopped the war and got them married. In this way, Krishna and Asura Raja Bali and Bansura and Krishna's son Pradyumna became reconciled. Now the question arises. That if Krishna was not a native of the Asura clan I, e, this country, then how would the daughter-in-law of his clan become of the Asura clan? Indra and Upendra Arya were the enemies of both Shri Krishna and King Bali. Krishna fought with Indra and Bali fought with Baman form Upendra, Vishnu, Bali. The story that the Aryans have created in the context of King Bali is that King Bali was a very majestic, brave but charitable king. Arya Nayak Vishnu Adi was unable to defeat King Bali in a one-on-one -on -one battle, so Vishnu planned to kill King Bali by deceit. Vishnu assumed the form of Vaman and asked King Bali for three steps of land. Mahadani and Mahapratapi King Bali agreed. According to the legend, Vishnu in the Vaman costume measured the earth in one step, the sky in one step and the body of Bali in one step and killed him by making him his slave. Some scholars say that Vaman measured the throne of King Bali into steps and said that the throne is the symbol of royalty. So we have taken the entire royalty by measuring your throne. I will take your body by measuring your body with the one step that is still left because of losing his promise. Mahadani Raja Bali handed over his kingdom to Vaman Vishnu without fighting and also dedicated his body. Vaman disguised Vishnu tied his hands with a red thread and brought King Bali to his camp and killed him. While tying hands with this red thread, 
Vishnu told Bali that you are very strong. For you this thread symbolizes that you are our hostage. You have to keep this thread tied in your hand to fulfill your promise even after thousands of years. There is a practice of tying this red thread in the hands of the natives of this country which is called Rakshasutra or Kalava. While tying this Rakshasutra or Kalava, the priest recites the thousand year old legend in verse Yen Badho Bali Raja Dan Vendro Mahabal Ten Twami Kamishtami Rakshe Machal Machal We bind you in the same way as we have tied you be still be still in fact it is proved from these mythological stories that Vishnu in different forms from Krishna King Bali King Mahishasura King Hiranyakaship etc fought to impose his Aryan culture on the original inhabitants of this country Indra and Vishnu are the axis of Arya culture whereas Krishna and Bali are of non-Aryan culture. However, people who believe Krishna to be a Kshatriya or an Arya should see their position in the Ram Ravana period before the Krishna period. The epic poet Valmiki has also described the Yadvas as sinners and marauders in the Ramayana and depicts the destruction of the Yadava kingdom Drumkulya by Rama. There is a dialogue between Ram and Samudra in the 22nd chapter of Yudhkand of Valmiki. Ramayana, Ram tells the sea to go to Lanka that you dry up, so that I can cross the sea and go to Lanka. The sea tells Rama its compulsion that if it cannot dry up, then Rama becomes enraged and shoots an arrow at Pratyacha. Samudra appears before Ram and advises him to build a bridge with Nal Neel. Ram says on the opinion of the ocean that Varunalaya listen to me, this arrow of mine is infallible. Tell me where to leave it. After listening to Ram, the sea says that Lord. Just as you are well known everywhere in the world and a pious soul, in the same way, there is a big holy country known as Drumkulya to my north, where many people of Abhir etc. castes live, whose looks and deeds are very terrible. They are all sinners and robbers. They drink my water. I keep getting the touch of those sinners. I cannot tolerate this sin, Shri Ram. You make this perfect arrow of yours successful there. Hearing these words of great ocean, he shot a very bright arrow in the same country as told by ocean. The place where that arrow fell became famous as the inaccessible desert on earth because of that arrow. Ram Ravana period by describing Yadav's kingdom Durmukulya as sacred by the sea and calling the Yadavs living there as sinners and robbers with terrible deeds, it is proved that Yadavs are neither Aryas nor Kshatris otherwise. Valmiki and the seas do not call them sinners, the way Dalits were not allowed to drink water from ponds. Wells etc. in this country and DR, Ambedkar had to organize the Mahat Pond movement. Isn't a more gruesome incident happened with the Yadavs Durmukulya state? Even in Ramcharit Manas, Pulsidas has written in Uttar Kand 129 1 that Abhiryavan, Kirat Khas, Swachdi Ati Adrubje, that is, Ahir, Musalman, Fowler, Khatik, Bhangi etc. are sinners. Similarly, the author of Vyas Smriti says in a verse that carpenter, barber, kahar, chamar, kumbhakar, baniya, chidimar, kayastha, mali, kurmi, ghangi, hole and chandal are all unholy if the sight falls on even. One of these, then one should see the sun, then a person belonging to these caste i.e. upper castes becomes pure. There are several verses to this effect in the Rigveda which prove to what extent the Aryans hated the natives of India and killed them on the basis of their skin color. Yadvashreshta Krishna was dark skinned. According to Rigveda, it is natural for them to have a conflict with Agni, Soma, Indra etc. in terms of being anti yajna and Indra. Whole underscore history underscore is underscore witness underscore from underscore which underscore cannot underscore win. From Rigveda to all the scriptures, Ahir and Ahir hero Krishna have been called non-Aryans. But in spite of this, when Krishna's influence prevailed among the natives of this country, these Aryans made Krishna a god despite being cruel to him and the brave caste of Krishna dynasty succeeded in making him a part of his Sanatan Panth. When Krishna was non-Aryan, the question of Gitopadesh is bound to arise in the sermon. 
Krishna himself has said many unacceptable things like being God, superiority of Brahmans, creating caste system, the Rigveda itself contradicts what is mentioned in the Gita. When Krishna himself was an Asura and Indradrohi according to the Vedas, then how can he talk about creating the Varna system? All the things which have been told from the mouth of Krishna in Gita to strengthen Brahmanism are beyond the truth. Black, Avarna Asura Krishna can never be a supporter of the caste system. The aura of Krishna, who left an indelible impression on the natives of India, was so wide that the Aryans were forced to include Krishna among their gods. This work was done in the same way as the Brahmans declared Gautam Buddha as an incarnation of Krishna in Garuda Purana and tried to include him in himself, the way the Indian culture of Asura Krishna was subverted by the Aryans. In the same way the scientific talk of Buddha succumbed to the unscientific rituals of Hinduism, some Buddhists are now visible in India after. D.R. Ambedkar embraced Buddhism. Otherwise, these Aryans had swallowed Krishna and Buddha by declaring Buddha as Krishna's incarnation and Krishna as Vishnu's incarnation. How ironic that Krishna, who is said to be an incarnation of Vishnu, is constantly fighting with Indra from the Vedas to the Mahabharata.